Chapter 32 And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us a god who shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden rings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden rings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received it at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, and made it a molten calf. And they said, This is your God, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation, and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to make matter. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, Go, get you down, for your people that you brought us up out of the land of Egypt have dealt corruptly. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed unto it, and said, This is your God, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why doth your wrath wax hot against your people, that you have brought forth out of the land of Egypt, with great power and a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak, saying, For evil did he bring them forth, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against your people. Remember Abraham, Ishiach, and Israel, your servants, to whom you did swear by your own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give it unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he said he would do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, tables that were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other, were they written, and the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Yeshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands, and broke them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made, and burned it with fire, ground it to powder, and strewed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto you, that you have brought a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot, you knowest the people, that they are set on evil. So they said unto me, Make us a God, which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, and I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were broken loose, for Aaron had let them loose for a derision among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Whoso is on the Lord's side, let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Put you every man his sword upon his thigh. Go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did it according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. And Moses said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, for every man hath been against his son, against his brother. 
that he may also bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure I shall make atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them a god of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray you, out of your book which you have written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And now, go, lead the people into the place of which I have spoken unto you. Behold, mine angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord smote the people, because they made the calf which our own made. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. As we see, we are continuing from yesterday. Moses is in the mount. Uh, the Lord's speaking to him, has been speaking to him. The Lord's been telling him about all the great things they're going to make to, uh, to set a memory, to set a light, to make sure nobody forgets what the Lord done, how he's have brought them forth from the Egypt, out of that place of graves, to make a little memorial, a little testimony, so to speak, a place to meet, the tent of meeting, the testimony as a little witness to, to make it known, to show, you know, this this is what we, uh, where the Lord brought you out of, and we'll find out. Uh, it would uh, be the first time the Lord would deliver them, but it would not be the last, as we find out even today. Uh, the Lord is always good to fulfill what he says he will do. But anyway, they have created these vessels, all these things, all this furniture, and this tent of meeting, the ark. and uh, They have the instructions to create them, I should say. And meanwhile, uh, down in the camp, we will find out, things uh, had took a little turn for the worst. And... That's where we're picking it up here in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us a God who shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. So now the people, they seen Moses had delayed. Moses had been in the mount for many days, and they seen Moses... Something was happened. He was gone. He wasn't present no more. That's the one that was drawn out. He delayed to come down from the mount uh, where he had went up into to speak with the Lord. And they come, and he said to Aaron, his brother, Aaron's the light bringer, uh, up, in other words, get up and make us a God, or stand before us even, to, and make us a God who shall go before us. Somebody to guide us, or a little Eloch, this uh, uh, God here, is a not a God. Uh, well, and we'll find out this is a, make us these mighty ones, the Elohim. Uh, it's gods in this ordinary sense, you might say, as far as their understanding goes, as they still were suffering from assimilation problems uh, in their limitation of of understanding and having to place God in some form of limits. But they didn't know what had happened to Moses, so they told Aaron, make us make us something to go before us, make us a little something to rule over us, so we'll find out that people didn't want to be responsible for themselves uh, as uh, that would require, we'll find out, to suffer from the punishments make yourself responsible. Two, and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden rings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. So Aaron, uh, that's the light bringer, as Moses' brother, he's got a similar understanding. He said, Break off these golden rings. Well, these golden rings uh, are in anything that uh, belongs to God, that continues around in a circle, we'll find out. 
These were on the ears of their, of your wives, your sons, and your daughters. Uh, because they, it, it's kind of like a servile type understanding that continues uh, according to these reflections of understandings, these masculines and these feminines that go forth from. Uh, we'll find out these ones that have placed themselves in that authority over the house, so to speak. Three, and all the people broke off the golden rings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. So all the people, they broke off uh, these golden rings. Uh, two, uh, basically they give them up or surrendered them over to our own. Four, and he received it at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made it a molten calf. And they said, This is your God, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And he, get, he received them. He takes all these uh, rings of gold that he had got uh, from them, from their hand, even from their works, and he fashioned it with a graving tool. So he carves it out. Of course, it was made partially, uh, this as a molten calf, and this molten calf is going to have a little bit of resent, uh, uh, something to do with it all, because we're going to go look at that word molten, as we'll find out, it's going to be Strong's number 4541, if you want to look it up for yourself, the word is masika, and it's properly, it's the pour over a fusion of metals, um, and a uh, uh, to create a league, concretely or covertly even, uh, to cover with a molten image. We'll, co we'll see that it comes from the Strong's, or from the word Nasak. It's um, it, this cast of metal. By analogy, though, it's to anoint a king. And we're going to find out what, the, what it assimilates is to set another one in authority besides God himself. And they said, now this is your God, Israel, and that brought you up out of the land of Egypt. This is the one that delivered you from the grave. Of course, we're going to find out. It just wouldn't be the case. Five, and when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. Laurel made proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. So Aaron, he seen all this. He seen that he had, the people was uh, content, you might say. So he builds an altar. That's a place where they're going to slay uh, before it, and that's what it becomes, a place of slaughter. And Aaron made proclamation, and he said, Tomorrow shall be a feast. So Aaron tells everybody that tomorrow they're going to have a feast unto the Lord. And we'll find out here using uh, Hashem's holy name in a reference to this not a God violation of law after law here we're not going to point it out uh, no. and tomorrow even in this next understanding we might say there's going to be this feast six and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to make merry. so that's what they did they rose up early uh, everybody gets up early great big day I guess to go offer uh, sacrifices unto a not a god they burnt their offerings, these things that was going to make atonement. Uh, they brought their peace offerings. Uh, that's offerings of thanksgiving, we'll find out. And the people sat down to eat and drink. So they sat down to have a meal. Have, they's having a big picnic, and they rose up to make merry. So as uh, they rose up to make merry, or, uh, this is the dance, you might say. They're going to... Uh, dance around this image they've created or to make merry to enjoy what they've done seven the Lord spoke unto Moses go get you down for your people that you brought us up out of the land of Egypt have dealt corruptly and the Lord Hashem speaks to Moses the one that drawn him. he says get you down your people that you brought up out of the land of Egypt have dealt corruptly uh, that's not wisely, it's foolishly. They have dealt ev with evil, you might even say, these ones that come forth out of the land of Egypt, that's that place of graves. Uh, we'll find out here, notice that the Lord uh, is trying to hand the people off um, unto Moses. 
saying that they're your people. We'll find out that they they belong to the Lord. But uh, the Lord's insinuating uh, that people have already have, have refused to listen to him and told, told Moses to go before the Lord and let the Lord speak to them. You know, so the the inability to stand before themselves and Moses having to be set in this position, uh, first of all, is um, uh, enough said in itself. Eight, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and worshipped it, and sacrificed unto it, and said, this is your God, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And that's exactly what they did. They had turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They had done, uh, violated the contract. Uh, we'll see. The contract was a very simple thing. They got it uh, uh, several days ago before Moses ever went up. It was a signed deal. Uh, we was going to get the the actual copy to show uh our copy, of course, the Lord's got His copy. But meanwhile, they had made them a molten calf. They'd done anointed them a ruler over them, someone else, a greater power, a higher power over them, and they worshipped it. Yeah, you know, they fell down before it. They thought it was God. They even tried to make it God. They had sacrificed unto it all kinds of hideous abominations. These things that men do, and they had said, "This is your God. This is your Elohim. This is." All these not of gods they had just got out of, but O oh, Israel, and this is in a to tell try to tell everybody this is your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt that delivered you from the place of graves. Uh, nine, and the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it's a stiff-necked people. And the Lord said unto Moses. I've seen this people. I've seen them. I know who they are now. Uh, behold, look. It's a stiff-necked people. They're stubborn. They're stubborn. They don't want to do what's the best. They don't want to take responsibility for themselves. They want to remain uh, in the that position, you might say, as a servant, as someone who has to be caused to serve who won't take responsibility for themselves. 10. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. And the Lord says, no, Moses, let me alone, or just basically uh, put it short, just get out of my way. Let me let my anger go, and I will consume them. I will destroy them utterly, and I will make of you a great nation. Of course, Moses' this promise was offered to Moses. But Moses knows the Lord has already promised. They, unto Abraham, 11, Moses besought the Lord, his God, said, Lord, why does your wrath wax hot against your people that you have brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? So the first thing Moses does is ask why. Why has the Lord got angry? Why is he ready to uh, destroy everybody? He says, your people, uh, we'll find out, transfer them back to the commandment. Before. The Lord was the one that had brought them out of the land of Egypt, that place of grace with a mighty hand, with great power, to show himself, and he's done, exposed himself all the world. Twelve. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak, saying, For evil did he bring them forth, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against your people. Wherefore, why should the Egyptians speak, those of the grave, uh, those of the crypts, those of the place of the graves, speak, or to say, For evil did he bring them forth, or to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? It was for this reason that he brought them out to just to destroy them from uh, off the from the flesh from all flesh. Turn from your fierce wrath. Repent of this evil against your people. So Moses uh, asked the Lord to turn, turn from that anger, 
turn uh, from uh, that evil against his people. We'll find out. To remember, 13, Abraham, Ishiak, and Israel, your servant, to whom you did swear by your own self, and, did, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give it unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And to remember, Abraham, that father of many nations, Ishiak, that one that laughed, and Israel, the one who contended with the mighty one, and men as well. Your servants, to whom you swore uh, by your own self, and we'll find out that the Lord had promised them that he would multiply their seed like the stars of heaven without number, like these lights of understanding, and all this land that uh, the Lord had spoken of, we'll find out it's, it's uh, it, uh, that promised land that was called at that time, that land that they would inherit forever. Uh, we'll find out it's a land that's uh, given by, uh, for just actions. It's a land that's it's a reward, you might say, uh, for those things that was done correctly. Uh, even by Abraham, Ishak, and Israel, 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he said he would do unto his people. And the Lord repented. The Lord, he turned he, he, of that evil. And he said he, which he said he would do. So he said the Lord turned. He wasn't going to kill uh, the people. He wasn't going to destroy this people. 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, tables that were written on both their sides, on the one side, and on the other were they written. So Moses turned, and he went down from the mount, that high place where the Lord was, with these two tables, and we will witness these two tables. They're going to be the law, uh, which... Hashem give from the beginning these tables of the testimony. It's a copy of the contract. They was in, it was in his hand. It was even in his work. These tables that were written on both sides. We'll find out these, these tables are that which is going to be set before or these engravings uh, of this contract. They were written on the one side and on the other side as well. There was good and bad in it, you might say. Uh, both sides, uh, 16, and the, the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables, and the tables represented that, that was the work of God, and the writing, the engravings, the, these uh, were the writings of the Elohim, these powers, these great, this great strength of creation itself. And it was graven upon these tables. It was made plain. It was set before everybody. Everybody knows the truth. The law was carved into your heart from the beginning. 17. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There's a noise of war in the camp. So when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, we'll find out. We get once again this implication that Mo Joshua was in the mountain with Moses. It would be to my understanding he may have waited for Moses at the bottom simply because the Lord said that Moses would come up alone. Nonetheless, Joshua says to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. So he hears a great ruckus going on. 18, and he said, It's not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And Moses replies, and he says to Joshua, No, that's not the voice of them that shout for mastery, or to make themselves the boss, or to try to control someone else, neither is it the voice of them that cry from being overcome from somebody else that would do the same thing. Uh, try to set themselves over or to, as we'll find out, uh, to treat anybody as a lesser as they would need some guidance. I guess everybody got the understanding God gave them in the beginning. The difference to you know right and wrong for themselves. A lot of people don't want to take responsibility. That's where we find ourselves today. Everybody wants to lean on saying, hey, I don't know what's going on. Uh, somebody put me in jail. 19. It came to pass as soon as he came nigh to the camp. 
Then he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses sang and waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands, broke them beneath the mount. And it comes to pass, as, he, as Moses comes nigh to the camp, that's where everybody was, uh, or as a similitude of that, where the tent of the meeting and all this was set up, that he saw the calf and the dancing. He saw that image they had made for themselves, this thing they had cast a rule over them, this that they were going to find out takes the um, uh, the king is is it's transferred over onto the king with this dancing and Moses' anger waxed hot and Moses wasn't happy about it, uh, the one that was drawn out. He cast the tables out of his hand, that was the contract, the, the copy of the contract which the Lord had given him. And he broke it beneath the mount. It was as if it had been disannulled immediately by this act and this violation of the um, first and second statutes of the contract. 20. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and strewed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And he took that calf, that which was that what it stood for that not a god they had created this thing they had made they burned it with fire it, yeah, it utterly was consumed we'll find out by the judgment of god he ground it into powder dust and he strewed it upon the water in, in upon the water these understandings we'll find out and made the children of israel drink it made them know what they had done made it give them some understanding of exactly what they had done according to the contract that the Lord had given. 21, And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto you, that you have brought a great sin upon them? So now Moses looks at Aaron, his brother, the light bringer, and he says, Now what did this people unto you, that you have brought a great sin upon them? What, how'd you, why'd you do that for? Create for them that not a God, that thing they fall down to, He brought a great sin upon them. 22, And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax high. You know us the people that they are set on evil. And Aaron says, Let let not your anger of my Lord wax high. We'll find out. Because Moses uh, asked the Lord not to be angry. We'll find out. Moses was angry himself. And now Mo Aaron's asking him not to be so angry because he knows the people that they're set on evil. Uh, they are just set to do bad from the beginning, and there's uh, the way they won't control themselves or their abilities to control themselves. We'll find out. It's given up. It's kind of given up through assimilations of understanding well, somebody telling you it's okay to do certain things when it's not okay. It creates havoc. There's a ramification. There's something that comes from your actions. You may not see it, but your children's going to be suffering from it. And they said, make us a God which shall go before us. Make us this, not a God, this molten image. For as this Moses, the man that brought us about of the land of Egypt, we don't know where he, we know not what has become of him. Of course, we knew this. They didn't know, they, Aaron's re-saying what the people said to him, that they didn't know what had happened to Moses. They didn't know where this one was that brought them up out of that land of graves. 24, and I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, and cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. So I said, Whosoever's got any gold, anybody that's got anything that belongs to God, let them break it off. This gold's always that first that come off. It's a little bit of greater understanding from the beginning. They want to try to throw in there to get it started. So they gave it to me, and I cast it into the fire into that place of judgment there came out this calf here come this uh calf and that calf it, it wouldn't have mattered what had come out of there it was going to be in a molten image and it have the same uh representation but we have this calf and this calf here is like a young um uh, cow calf who would be dancing around of course it has becomes that image of of that ball image uh, we'll find out 25 and Moses saw that the people were broken loose for iron had let them loose for a derision among their enemies 
So Moses sees now that the people were broken loose. Uh, they was out of control, in other sense, uh, uh, to be made a spectacle of. For Aaron had let them loose, for a derision among their enemies. And that's what they had done. They would went out and broke loose. Like being uh, drunk and tearing up the town, you might say, in a sense of that matter, or just being off your rock or going around shooting off your guns and out of control. And it becomes a derision among their enemies. Other enemies see these things and they say, What manner of people is this? 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Whoso is on the Lord's side, let them come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. So now Moses stands in the gate of the camp. That's that place that even represents judgment in the camp. We're going to find out. It, it stands for the overall place of the Israelites at that time. And he says, Who, Whoso is on the Lord's side, whosoever is on Hush, Hashem's side, uh, and that would be to stand for or be united with, as we'll find out, let them come unto me, and all the sons, those masculines that come forth from Levi, Levi means to join, gather themselves together unto him. So, in a sense, they pick that side, and they pick the side of the Lord, 27, and he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Put you every man his sword upon his thigh. Go to and fro from the gate to gate throughout the camp. Slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord. As we'll find out, Moses is speaking directly for the Lord. As the Lord had uh, said earlier, Moses will speak for me. Uh, he is the Elohim the strength, the powers of Israel, those that contend with the mighty one anyway. He said, put every man his sword upon his thigh. And a sword here is not a good thing. A sword here is going to stand for this judgment. It's going to stand for that which slays. And it's on his thigh. That's a place of strength. And he's going to put it on him. And we'll find out. It's going to be the word in the end. Uh, go to and fro from gate to gate, judgment from place of judgment to place of judgment throughout the camp. And we'll find out everybody's tent where those were found, they're going to slay. They slayed every man his brother. That's those of a similar understanding. Every man his companion. That was their friends and their neighbors. They're, these, those even that was most dear to them, you might say, they, they slayed. Uh, they, even those they knew the best. 28, And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. And these sons, those masculine strengths, uh, we will find out. It's kind of like that negative energy. Of course, it's not negative. It's necessary. Did according to the word of Moses, just like uh, the one that was drawn out commanded. There fell of that people that day, even in that understanding, about 3,000 men. Because it completes, it, it's, the, it's the perfect witness even of, the, of, of that fulfillment among men. Because that's exactly what happens, we'll find out sometimes. Those that are closest to us, those that are uh, a lot of times in our own house, fall away to these things. Uh, and... It's hard. Uh, it's hard not to assimilate into the understandings of men, especially when that's all that's practiced today. Twenty-nine. And Moses said, "Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, for every man hath been against his son and against his brother, that he may also bestow upon you a blessing this day." And Moses said, "Consecrate yourselves. Set yourselves aside. Consecrate yourselves." Uh, is to uh, wash yourselves already, uh, even to make yourselves clean, even in that understanding to the Lord. Uh, that's Hashem. We'll find out this is to get right, for every man hath been against his son and against his brother. And that's even in his own house and those of similar understandings even, that it may also bestow upon you a blessing this day. Well, once again, because the, to, to choose what's right, uh, over everything else because right's right, wrong's wrong. And sometimes, you know, we all want a better world, but nobody wants to take the responsibility, my friend, and do their part to make it that. 
30, it comes to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin. Now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure I shall make atonement for your sin. And it came to pass on the morrow that, and even in that next understanding, Moses said unto the people, We'll find out Moses had cleansed them, uh, destroyed their molten image even. He said, You've sinned a great sin. You've done wrong against the Lord and creating a power uh, over you that stands between you and the Lord. Well, first of all, this was a lesson they had to learn from the beginning. And now I will go up unto the Lord. Hashem, Hashem he's going to present himself before the Lord. And supposing, peradventure, supposing I shall make atonement for your sin. Uh, well, by doubt the Lord had redeemed them, and now this atonement had to be made. Uh, atonement is going to be right or wrong to 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 pay for in some way uh, what you've done wrong. Thirty one, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, "Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and made them a god of gold." And Moses returned to the Lord. That's how Hashem he's the powers of creation himself. And he says, oh, uh, this people sinned a great sin. They've done a great sin against you, Lord, as we'll find out. They have, and they've made them a god of gold. They've made them an Elohim, a strength or a power. We'll find out of these things that belong to God. 32, yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray you, out of your book, which you have written. So Moses is going to try to take up the responsibility for what the people's done wrong. He says, now, if you will forgive them of their sin, if, if it's possible, and if you won't forgive them of their sin, blot me, I pray you out. In other words, take me out as well, because they will find out in a similitude of offering yourself instead of. And he says, and blot me out of your book, that which you have written. Because the Lord's keeping track of everything. He just wanted to let you know that. Ever since you've been writing it down, he decided to go ahead and write it down too. Made a little copy for himself. Made a little copy for you. Everybody's on the same page. 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And the Lord responded to Moses, Hashem does that one who responds to the one that was drawn out. And he says, Whosoever sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Him will I erase. In other words, it's, it's kind of like you turn the pencil around. We've got a little eraser on the other end, and we just rub it out. It, it blots it out. It removes that which was written in. And it's just blowed away like dust. And this is what happens to the one that sins against me, said Hashem. There's nobody going to stand uh, in the middle. There's nobody going to stand between it because in the end we'll find out the Lord, the Lord give you the law just as well as he did everybody else. 34, and now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto you. Behold, mine angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And now go. Go on. Go on, he says. In other words, it's a done deal for today. We're, we're done talking about it. Lead the people unto the place which I have spoken unto you. Continue in the path. And behold, mine angel, that's my deputy, shall go before you. Uh, we'll find out. Nevertheless, in that day, when even, even in that understanding, when I visit, when I return, I will visit their sin upon them. And we'll find out that sin will return upon them. Uh, uh, as well, the that's a judgment. That's a a not a good thing, my friends. And anyone you want to look at it, and we'll find out what and the, their sin was in the fact that they had made that molten image. Thirty-five, and the Lord smote the people because they had made the calf which Aaron made, and the Lord smote. He smote people. Hashem did and what people did he smote? All those that had caused Aaron, the light bringer, to make the calf. 
that calf, that thing that's going to stand for uh, the image itself, that what they made the, tried to make the Elohim of, well, find out it doesn't work. It doesn't work, and it's never going to work. And we're going to move forward. Exodus chapter 33. Turn, return.